Today, what I'm going to talk about are the 10 things you guys might have missed in Blade Runner 2049. Oh yeah, there will be spoilers ads, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, go see it, come back, and watch this video. So here we go. Number 10. How rich is Wallace? In 2049, Officer K tries to seek information on the origins of the wooden horse. When Dr. Badger is examining it, he tries to buy it off K, saying that this real wood is insanely valuable, and that the little wooden horse could buy him a real horse. In every scene that Wallace is in, wood is the most prominent building material in each room. Also, you can see there is a lot of water in most of the rooms as well. And in the beginning of the film, Officer K gets home and hops in the shower. He gets sprayed with 99.9% .9 decontaminated water. It's a short burst that lasts a second. And this shows us that uncontaminated water is very scarce. So when Wallace has water in all of his rooms, it subconsciously makes us think of how expensive his establishment is. Number 9. The Wooden Horse and Other Replicants. After Mary Mariette stays the night with Kay. She notices the wooden horse on Kay's bedside table, and then she picks it up to examine it. You can see her have a great deal of familiarity with the object, and giving us a big hint that there are also a lot of other replicants who possess the same memory of putting the wooden horse in the furnace. Number 8. Gaff and his origami sheep. In the original Blade Runner, Gaff would construct origamis to represent character motives and different elements of the plot. He gives Deckard a unicorn origami in the ending of Blade Runner to reinforce the unicorn dream sequence. And in 2049, we briefly see Officer K talking to Gaff about Deckard. Towards the end of their conversation, Gaff places a sheep origami on the table. And this was definitely in reference to the book title, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Which Blade Runner is an adaptation of. But the sheep origami has a much deeper meaning to the plot of 2049. It was meant to symbolize K, and now he's simply like a sheep, as sheep are thoughtless, followers, and just the same as one another. A huge contrast from the unicorns saying that K is not special, and that he's not a replicant who was born, but just another replicant who has no significance. Number 7. An early clue K wasn't the replicant who was born. When K visits the same orphanage the wooden horse was placed in, you can see that most of the males have their hair completely shaved off, while girls can still have somewhat longer hair. So in the flashback when we see what was supposedly the younger version of K, the kid has longer hair, clearly making it a girl who hid the horse away. Number 6. Was K unique. Throughout the film, we thought K was the replicant child born from Rachel and Deckard. After we realized he wasn't, we as an audience kind of disregarded his significance. But when you think about it, this new Nexus series is unable to lie or disobey orders. Officer K lies to the lieutenant about the discovery and retirement of a replicant that was born. K expresses anger and frustration when viewing his memories, and K loved his hologram joy. So yes, one thing that some people do overlook is that K was just as unique as any any other human being. Some could say he was a real human being, and a real hero. Number 5. Frasa's Profile The resistant leader Frasa's profile can be seen earlier in the film when K is going through the records of Morton, which is why K recognizes her when she shows up for the first time in the film. And this would explain Morton's involvement with the resistance, and she could also be the same resistance leader behind the blackout of 2022. Number 4. The Seawall the final fight scene between Love and Kay takes place on the shoreline of LA, on a gigantic structure called the Seawall. It was constructed somewhere in between the years 2040 and 2049. Its purpose was to battle the rapidly changing global climate, as it was drastically affecting the rise of the water on the coast of LA. Number 3. The Eyes of Both the Original and 2049 The all-seeing eye that opens Blade Runner 2049 most likely belongs to Officer K, while the first Blade Runner also opens with an eye, and that eye has been theorized to be Roy's eye. Both eyes are blue, and both eyes would belong to replicants, and both of these replicants would be seeking their humanity in each film. Number 2. The debate that will come up with Deckard's daughter. If Deckard is a human, the film's psychological debate will only increase. It would mean that him and Rachel had the first human replicant child, thus blending the species together, creating a hybrid, really putting some emphasis on the question, are humans that different from replicants? And in 2049, being born was a huge part of knowing whether or not you have a soul. But would Deckard's daughter, Anna, have a soul even though she was half replicant? And number one, the meaning behind the last line in the film. At the end of the film, during the death of Kay, the song from the original Blade Runner, Tears and Rain, can be heard playing. During Roy's death, he talks about his experiences and ends his monologue claiming all those moments will be lost in time, like tears and rain. And when Deckard gets to his daughter, she then tells him to wait one moment. This is low-key implying that Kay's death and 
and his sacrifice is just one moment that will be lost in time. So those are my top 10 things you guys might have missed in Blade Runner 2049. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next sci-fi analysis.